If we get done early, we can talk all the Star Wars you want. <laughs> OK. Here's what we're going to do today. We are going to go into sorting. Now, at the end of the class, I will talk about um, uh, what your assignment on sorting is going to be. I think you guys will like it. I think I mentioned it the other day. You're going to have to produce three sorts of your own, pretty much from scratch. Like I give you a very, like, very light uh, kind of structure for one of them. And then you have to do the other two completely on your own. So it's going to be a little bit of that. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about how we can maybe uh, test those two. The testing for this, uh, for this assignment, it's not going to be a big provide that you have lots and lots of tests to pass initially. You're going to have, uh, we're going to do testing separate to the provide. Uh, but basically, all you need to do is make sure your numbers sort properly. <laughs> okay, like that's the test. And then we will be able to see whether you implement it correctly by A, looking at your code, and B, uh, seeing how fast it runs. Now, this is an algorithmic like speed. We're not talking about, oh, it's five seconds versus one second, right? But it's maybe 10, 20 seconds versus, or 25 seconds versus five seconds, because it should be in five seconds because it's a order n square, or order n versus n squared, or something like that. We will talk more about those details. The grading for the next, for this, that sorting assignment will be an in person grading, which means you're going to sign up on a time with your TAs with the TAs, and you're going to go and sit down with two TAs, and they're going to look over your code and ch talk about your code. So that's how the grading for this next one's going to be. So I think it'll be a, a different type of project in that sense. OK, questions before we get going? All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a little quick Unix tip of the day on Mail and Mutt, which are two programs that you will probably never use but could if you wanted to. Then we'll do sorting. We'll talk about. Uh, four different types of sorts today. Next week, we're going to do our second lecture on sorting. We're going to talk about three, maybe four more di other different types of sorts. Sorting is a pretty big topic, okay, and it's actually really important in computer science. So we'll we'll talk about that. Okay, all right. So Unix tip of the day. Turns out, so some of you guys are asking, how do I send files back and forth between? Uh, the server and my own computer. And we talked about SCP and we talked about getting uh, FTP clients and all that. You can actually send regular old email from the command line, which is kind of cool, right? There's a uh, server called, a, you just, a program called Mail, and you can write a me an email message by typing mail s and then the subject in quotes and then an email address, and then you, it actually gives you a little form to fill in your email. OK, so let's try this. Let's see. Uh, I want to do this. And then I want to move this up so you can see it. OK, mail s uh, main. I, I guess I'm, I got main in the brain. OK, mail s, thank you. Uh, let's see. Test email about Star Wars. We were talking about Star Wars before you came in, before some people came in. OK, and then uh, let's send it to George. Dot Lucas at Lucas.net. I don't know if that's really an email. But anyway, that will pull up a little email if it's, oh, you know what? Sorry, I got to do this from the Linux server. Or the homework server, rather. Homework, there we go. And oops, there we go. OK, type it again, there we go. OK, and what this will do is bring up a little thing where you can just type, this is my email about Star Wars. Can you see that? Nope. Nope. Uh. There we go. Star Wars. Uh, some people are crazy and think you uh, produced them in the wrong order. <laughs> OK. And then uh, what did I say? How did, how did I say to exit it? I forget. Uh, control D on a separate line. Oops. So what's that? So I don't actually want to send this to him. <laughs> Get me with a lightsaber or something. Okay. Uh, okay. And then we have a blank line, and then uh, concerned uh, viewer. Okay. And then blank line. Control D, and then it says EOT for end of text, and that's it. <laughs> and then that's it, and your email has been sent away. And hopefully, unless George actually has an e that email address, it'll get returned to me. But that's, that's how you actually send an email. It's pretty cool. Yes? Does the S flag mean send? The, the S flag means that's the subject. Okay. 
So dash s is the so the subject of the email is test email about Star Wars. The next one is the email address, and then you can do that. So it's pretty easy to text one. Yeah. It's sending it from my uh, like sending it from my your your Linux tops email, not your name dot that by the way, that was an email I just got, I guess. Let me see uh, probably the return. Let me see. There we go. Oh, return email, sorry. Say again. You have a different email address, right? You have an email address that is your username at cs.tops.edu. So if people send something to that, where would I find it? Yeah, good question. You would go to, there's two places. You can go to webmail.eecs.tops.edu and pick it up there. Or you can have it forwarded, which is probably what you should do. So you've got to go to webmail.eecs and send it. So that's a good question. Get sent from that one. Uh, and that's how you can send an email. Now, many times you might want to send a, uh, an attachment. So let's say you have an attachment. I forget if I have any attachments here uh, or something we can send. Uh, lab6.zip. OK? So if you want to send an attachment, you can't do it straight with mail. You have to use this other program called MUT, which is something else. Mail something, something, something. And you do dash x, dash s, then the subject, then the email address, then dash a in the file you want to send. Right? So it would be mail dash x dash s another email about star wars right and then george at what's that oh this is mutt you're right thank you m u t t okay uh, and then dot com whatever and then um, dash a uh, let's pretend lab 6 dot zip had a uh, picture of Darth Vader in it or something. Okay. And then you hit Enter, and it gives you a different type of window. And this one says, end the message with a period on a line by itself. Why? I'm not sure. That's the way they, whoever built this did it. Uh, hey, George, G-E-O-R-G-E, -E, I hope you like my fan art uh, viewer. OK. And then period on its own line, and then it blasts it away. And that's it. So you can send emails that way if you want to. Questions on that? Kind of a neat way to send email if you're uh, really quick. Uh, Bruce Molay, do you guys know him from Comp 11 if you, if you know him? He sends email all the time from the command line. So, yeah, that's probably why it looks like all texty when he sends it and stuff. Yeah. OK. All right, so that's how you do that. All right, let's get into sorting. OK, so I said sorting is a pretty important thing. Can you, can you tell me some reasons why sorting might be an important part of computer science? Ben? It can, make, it can make certain things run faster. It can make certain things run faster. What else? Why is sorting important? Yeah, Ben? If you can sort a data structure, it's more simple to implement with. How about even bigger, like bigger picture? Yeah, Yanni? It's easier to find things. It's easier to find things, and we do a lot of finding. Think Google, right? Yeah. A lot of data is only useful if it's sorted. Yeah, there's a lot of like times we want to sort things. I mean, we sort things all the time. Humans are kind of by nature like people who like things in a particular order, right? We're a very like ordered kind of society, and it makes it nice that we can we can do this. So yeah, so all these things are very important, um, and we have lots and lots of different ways of making things into a sorted like structure. Back to the idea that it's faster when you have things sorted. Aren't we giving our data structure more information by sorting it? Like that's by definition what we're doing. We're saying, here's more information. The following data structure is in a particular order. Therefore, you can do binary searches. You can do, you know, you can know what the max and the min are very easily and, and all that. So it's it's a, a great uh, like tool for us to use. And many computer scientists have thought lots like hard about this problem, right? Sorting, right, is in general just putting things in some order, but normally we pick the order based on things we know, alphabetical, numerical, etc. You can sort based on anything. It's kind of like the pri it, it, would, it turns into a priority sort of idea where you have a, a number and you put it and you say that number determines the order this is going to go in. And you can decide that. Okay? This is, I love this definition. For a list to be sorted, it has to be in non-decreasing order. What else could we say that? Increasing, no. 
1, 2, 3, 4 is increasing. What's 1, 1, 2, 3, 4? It's non-decreasing, right? It's a computer science-y thing. This is non-decreasing. Basically, the number next to it can't be, the number next in order can't be uh, smaller than the one next to it, but it can be the same. So this is a sorted, this is also sorted, but this is non-increasing, not just, or sorry, non-decreasing, not strictly increasing. Yeah? Why couldn't you call 43211 sorted? I mean, you know, you can. Okay. You can. I'm just saying that the, the, like the one and the one, this, all this is saying is you can have duplicates, basically. And the order of those duplicates is based on the fact that it's not, it, again, this means increasing. Right? This is not strictly one, 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 one. Nobody in the world would say that's increasing. But you could all say, OK, it's non-decreasing. You know, so that's that. OK. Um, and then we have to make it what we call a permutation of whatever input we have. Right? You can't say something sorted when you added new stuff to it. You, know, like you, can't, you, know, you can't start out with 1, 2, 3, 4, and then say 1, 5, 2, 4. Well, that might be sorted. Well, no, 5 is new. Right? It's got to be an original permutation of the input. So if the input was. 3, 1, 4, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4 is a permutation of 3, 1, 4, 2 and is sorted. Okay? If you want, you can sort in the opposite order. It doesn't really matter. We're going to, in this case, generally sort from lowest to highest okay? in general. That's the way we'll do it in this class. Okay? As I said, sorting's been very well researched. As it turns out, sorting is not something that's completely solved. People are still coming up with new ways to do sorting. In fact, in 2002, which I guess seems like kind of a long time ago uh, at this point, there was a, this guy named Tim who came up with a sort called Tim Sort. <laughs> right? Why not? He, he came up with it, right? And anybody programming the Python language? If you do a sort in Python, it uses Tim Sort because the people from Python said, hey, you know what? This is actually a pretty darn good sort. Right? So you can look it up on Wikipedia. We won't go over team sort, but it's a pretty good sort. It's faster than most of the other implementations of sort. The people in Python said, hey, that's a good one. And that was only from 2002. So that's not too bad. Most of the other sorting problems were solved in like the 50s, 60s sort of time range. Probably even before that. Like mathematicians thought about sorting before that. But in terms of computer science, like we're talking some pretty old kind of stuff. Okay? All right. Fundamentally, Comparison sorts, and we will talk on Monday what the difference between a comparison and a non-comparison sorts go. But for now, sorts where you take two numbers and you look at the difference and then put them in the right order. It's a comparison sort. Fundamentally, this is like giving away the, the end result, you can't do better algorithmically than n log n. That's about as good, that's as, good as you're going to do on average. It turns out that you can provably say you're never going to do better than order n log n. Okay, we'll see why n log n seems to come up a lot uh, for some of these sorts. But that's as good as you're going to get for sorting. Okay, you can't just go through a list and at the end, like go through it once and at the end have it be sorted. Okay, is this better or worse than uh, better or worse than linear? Worse. It's actually worse than linear. Yeah. So sorting is not a particularly easy thing to do algorithmically speaking. If we can do better than that, we would love to. With comparison sorts, we just can't, as it turns out. Well, too bad. Uh, is it better or worse than log n? Worse than log n too, of course, because log n is even better than n, right? So it is better than n squared. So if you can get an n log n, you're doing pretty well. Not only do we have to think about the time complexity, but we also have to think about the space complexity. Okay. And in fact, when you do your homework assignment, you're going to have to be able to uh, tell me what the space complexity is. It's actually generally not hard. But what I mean by that is some sorts you can actually do what we call in place, which means if I've got an array, 4, 1, 3, 2, and I want to do this in place, it means I don't need more arrays to temporarily store stuff in. That's what in place means. Okay? You can get off by one error to an in place, which is fine. Like if I wanted to take the four and let's say I wanted to move the one where the four is, I could temporarily move the four into some temp variable, put the one there, then put the four there. That's still technically in place. Yeah. So it's almost like in place is constant asymptotic behavior of space showing Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Aaron's absolutely right. It's constant. 
Yes, yeah, 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 right, right. In this case, right, in place means there's no extra space, basically, right? But if you want to think about it asymptotically in that sense, if, it, if we decided to do this, we could have this, this sort go like this. Uh, we could have it go 4, 1, 3, 2, create a whole nother array, oops, create a whole nother array, right? And then say, find the smallest one, put it here. Find the next smallest one, put it here. Find the next smallest one through here. Next smallest one here. And that's sorted. But the space complexity is now twice, all right? Two times n in that case. Does that make sense? We just need to think about that. Other sorts that we do will use lots and lots of extra space, as it turns out. They'll be fast sorts, but they'll actually use a lot more space than we might want to for a different sort. Okay? That's what we mean when we say uh, a sorting is in place or not. Okay? And it can be important because sometimes you're dealing with billions of items and you don't have a billion extra spaces of memory to put your billion items, or 10 billion extra spaces, depending on what type of sort you're trying to do. So we do have to think about that a little bit. Okay? All right. In place sorting can also be what we call stable or unstable. Okay? You probably won't need to worry about this. In fact, I will not test you on like algorithmically coding a stable or unstable sort. But what that means is if we have we have 4, 2, 1, 1, 7, right? The order of these ones will be the same order. And I know it doesn't, doesn't matter. Let's say there's data associated with this, right? There's like this whole part up here is data, 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 right? Data, 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 data. If, and this is like x data and y data for the x for the first one, y for the second one. Well, when you finish sorting it, 1, 1, 2, 4, 7, the x data for the 1 will come before the y data for the 1. That's what it means when we say it's a stable sort. Okay? Some sorts don't keep the order of identical keys in this case. Okay? Stable sorts will. Does that make sense? That one's a, that one's a slightly trickier topic. Not, not too bad, but it just basically means that there's even a priority to the, to the things that are already in there. They have to stay in the same order when you get done. Okay, we won't do too much of that. When you get to algorithms class, I'm sure you'll talk all about stable sorts. Okay. Uh, let's see. When we're going to have, as I said, we're going to have a couple lectures on sorting, right? There are lots of different cool sorting websites. As I said, sorting is like a big topic in computer science. There are lots of cool sorting websites, like this one, which is one of my favorites. Okay, I will move the screen down a little bit. This is a this is a sorting website that this will give you lots of information. In fact, this is a good one to go to for your project. It is uh, called sorting-algorithms.com. And what they've done here is they've kind of they've said, here's a whole bunch of different sorts. We will talk about every one of these except for quick three. We'll maybe mention it, but we'll actually learn how to do all these other ones. And on the top of this, on the going down, it says, here's a random list of numbers. And they've made it so that the, a littler bar means a small number, and a big bar is a big number. And we're trying to get it from little bar to big bar. Like, for instance, um, see how these are reverse sorted? This is going from big to little. We want it to be the other way around. So it's got random, nearly sorted, reversed, and some unique ones. This is an interesting one, too, because some sorting algorithms don't do so well when you have duplicates of lots of the elements. Okay, it's just by the way, by virtue of the type of thing. But what's cool is if you hit this big giant button up here, watch what happens. It starts sorting everybody, right? And you can then tell which ones are faster and slower by which ones finish first, right? So, yeah, poor selection sort. Um, by the way, oh, I, 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 I lied. We will not talk about bubble sort. Don't ever do a bubble sort. In fact, in fact, so let me, I, I totally forgot about this until right now. Um, there is an important person in the world who cares about this. Uh, bubble sort. OK. So this little video I'm going to show you, this, hang on, it's a little loud. This little video is um, from, I believe, before the first, before the 2008 presidential election. And this is when uh, uh, president, presidential candidate Barack Obama went to Google and they interviewed him there. And of course, at Google, you've got to ask interview questions about like, computer science-y stuff. So. You're here at Google, and I like to think of the presidency as a, as a job interview. 
Now, it's hard to get a job right. as president. Right. And, and you're going to the degree now. It's also hard to get a job at Google. Right. We, um, <laughs> we have questions, and we ask our candidates questions. And uh, this one is from Schw uh, Larry Schwimmer. Okay. What, <laughs> you guys think I'm kidding? It's right here. What is the most efficient way to sort a million three to bit integers? <laughs> well, uh, I'm, I'm, maybe I, I, I'm sorry. Maybe no, 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 no. I, 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 I think I, I, I think uh, I think the uh, the bubble sort would be the wrong way to go. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, who's holding this? Okay. I didn't see computer science we, in we, the we, background. We, we, we've got our slides. Wow. There. <laughs> <laughs> You should save this spot. Yeah, I should save this spot. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, President Obama even says don't ever use bubble sort. It's a, it's a, it's a terrible sort. Um, Whenever you bring it up, you just link them to that spot. Yeah, exactly. Why is bubble sort the one sorting algorithm they teach in ES2? Well, why is bubble sort? Because it's so easy to program. It's a very easily programmed one, but you should tell your professor, hey, my computer science professor said don't ever use bubble sort, so why don't you teach us a different sort like insertion sort or selection sort or quick sort, and then they'll just say, tell them to go away. That's what we'll say. <laughs> but anyway, but yeah, question. Can you, give us, can you take 50 seconds to tell us the steps of a bubble sort and then never touch it? No, I'm not even going to tell you. You go look it up if you want, but don't even. Not a good sort. It's just a terrible, it's a really terrible sort in general, although it happened to beat selection sort in this case. Um, well. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to do a selection. We'll see what selection sort is in a minute. Yeah, you'll see why. Is this anything like that, trans that, like that um, tree transferal we looked at yet last on Monday? The, what do you mean? Oh. oh, you mean the heap sort and that sort of thing? Yes. There, well, the heap sort is, exact, is like that, yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh. Well, That's anyway, so, so okay. if you want, we, we will come back to this, this little diagram pretty quickly. But you can kind of see, like, for instance, if you want to know how does merge sort perform, or let's see, what's a better example? How does quick sort, which we'll get to, perform on uh, all these different ways? You can actually just do that, and you can see which one is going to notice which one it's doing poorest on. Right? Quick sort is not a very good one when you have lots of unique elements in it. Altogether, pretty fast, right? If you look at insertion sort, right, uh, they're all going to be relatively slow. Well, one of them might actually, the nearly sorted was fast because it. Because that's the way that works. Yeah. Why is there one that has like similar elements called unique? Uh, because there's only notice there's only one, two, three, four different types of few unique ones. Right, right, right. There's only a few number of ones that are unique. Uh, well, gr yeah, I guess grammatically that's hard to say correctly, but you can you can see it up here. There's a small number of them that are the same number. Anyway, <laughs> question, Aaron. You ever, okay. Anybody else questions? On this? OK, so that's a good place to go. Um, there's another one which is also a good place to go. The visualization, uh, the visualization website we've gone to a number of times uh, has a very good compar comparison sort one. This one, for instance, is, let's see, let's do a merge sort on this one. right? I'm going to speed it up because it's kind of fast. You'll see what they, we'll, we will go over this a little bit later. But by the way, notice it's, it's putting things out here. What do you think the? What do you think the space complexity is? It's yeah, it's more than just uh, it's actually more than than thing. But let me speed this. Let's see if I can speed this up even more. You can see yeah. So by watching these, you can kind of get a feel. You might want to watch it a little slower, <laughs> but you can get a feel for what it's doing by by kind of watching it and the complexity of doing it. Right? It's hard to see these right there, but so how many yeah. different places is it storing data below? We will find out. When we do merge sort, you'll find out where, how many different places. But, but this is a good one. If you want to see like the uh, quick sort and so forth, and uh, it, it shows you how to do it. You know, it does, it does the whole different algorithm, which is pretty cool. Okay? It does, shows you everything about that. Okay. Isn't it what? Oh, yeah, this one that you're right. I forgot to, yeah. Hey, Alan, you'll notice something that's already sorted, even quick sort, is not a very good thing to do. So that other. There are other concerns when you're sorting, right? If you already have a sorted list, you might want to use a different type or an almost sorted list. You might not want to use some algorithm versus another one. Okay, so there's other various reasons. Okay. And this is my favorite that I'm going to show you now. This is 15 sorts in six minutes. I think we have six minutes to watch this. Why not? Um, this is actually kind of loud, if I recall, too. But there we go. Okay. Let me, let me, hang on. Is it still going? 
Whoops, no, it died. What did I do? There we go. Hang on. Ah! Okay. Let me start this over. Okay. Let me start this over. So what this is doing, this is taking a lot of numbers in random order, right? And it's applying different types of sorts to them. And then what it has done is it is actually the frequency of the element that it's working on is based on the size of the element, right? So you'll see little tiny elements like have a really low frequency or maybe high, I forget. And then really high ones have a, a different frequency. And you can hear that as we go along. So to the musicians in the room, this may sound like noise, but it might sound beautiful too. Who knows? Okay. This is doing a, uh, say which one it is, compare, uh, I can't tell which one, selection sort. Okay. Selection sort, and then it sorted it. Okay. This is an insertion sort. We will go back to these in a bit, but, right? Insertion sort is not a fast sort. <laughs> Quick sort. Quick sort is weird. We'll get to we'll, it's it's pretty awesome, but it's weird. Not bad. Okay, uh, merge sort. This is this one. You can almost tell what's really going on. It's merging the two sides. <laughs> right? Heap sort. This is the one we've already talked about. Um, it's tough to tell what's going on here. We were, when you remember this, when we go over it in about 20 minutes, it's a max heap, yeah, or a min heap. It doesn't really matter, but um, yeah, I guess you're right. It would be a max. Not bad. What's this one? Radix sort. We're going to talk about this one on Monday. If you can figure out this by what's going on, you're a better person than me. All right, this is another radix sort, different type. It's the other way around. It's, it's, it should sound exactly reversed, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what's next? This is the one from the standard C++ library. Can you tell what it's doing? I believe it's doing more or less a quick sort actually, but yeah. and it waits till the end to do a, a different type of sort for all the individual pieces or all the littler pieces. We'll talk about that later too. All right, what else do we have here? Uh, oh, this is the same thing except stable. Remember, if they're the same number, it has to stay in the same order. What kind of sort is this? Merge sort, yeah. There we go. Let's see what's next. Shell sort. We'll talk about shell sort in a few minutes, too. your bubble sort. Notice there's many fewer elements here. Yeah. 
Terrible sort. <laughs> Cocktail shaker sort. Can you kind of tell? It looks like a guy shake, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we're doing the, you know. Yeah. It's pretty good. Notice fewer elements, though. The gnome sort. I don't know what this one is. Do I be what? The gnome sort? I don't know, yeah. It's not a very smart one. Right? Yeah, you're right. Okay. Bitonic sort. This is like a um, kind of two different sides at once. Yeah, I don't know how this one works. This is a very good one for parallel algorithms, which is interesting too. All right. Okay. So I'll talk about bar Bago sort in a bit. So it ends with this, and this never gets sorted, incidentally. <laughs> It'll do this for another 30, 20 seconds. So I don't think we need to, need to continue that. But um, so there's all your sorts. Whew. Anybody need a break with their ears yeah. for that? Yeah. That was a little bit. But now you've seen all, a bunch of, all the different sorts. Um, maybe we'll come back to some of those after we talked about a couple and see what they are. So lots of different online resources for visualizing sorts, which is sometimes a, a, a good way to do it. OK? All right. Let's talk about our first one that we're going to actually cover, OK? The insertion sort. Ah. Stop. Up, back up, back up, back up. There we go. OK, close enough. The insertion sort. We have already done an insertion sort. Remember when we started talking about priority queues, and we said we want to keep an ordered an ordered uh, in, uh, list. And for the ordered list, we did what we call an insertion sort. What we're going to talk about today is an in-place insertion sort. Let's, re just, so let's just remember our insertion sort from the other day, because this one's, this one's slightly different, although it behaves more or less the same. For our insertion sort the other day, if I want to put in uh, uh, 4, 1, 2, 7, Nine. Yeah, all right, close enough. If I'm going to put in four, and I want to make it so that the, the smallest one is on the left. OK, if I insert four, where does it go? Right here. <laughs> right? That's the first place. It's always going to go right there. OK, and then I insert one. OK, how did we figure out what to do with one? Yeah, we actually, what we do is we compare it to the first one. And if that one needs to move, uh, if that one needs to move up, we, we, we start from the end, really, is what we do in this, in this case. And then we go, we go back down until we get to the, one, the last one. If that one needs to move up, we move it up and then put the new one there. Okay? And then two, we do the same thing. We go back and does the four need to move up? Because we're going to have to put two to the left of it. So we move the four here. So two, oops, sorry, two and four, right? Sorry, my handwriting on the left hand is not so good. And then uh, the 7, we put the 7 right there because nothing needs to move. And then 9 is the same thing. But you see how it works? Like you just go down until you find the spot and move everybody else up and do it. That's an insertion sort based on numbers that aren't already in the array. Okay? What we're going to talk about is an insertion sort that's what we call in place, meaning the numbers are already in the array and we need to go through somehow and figure out where they need to go and how to actually uh, make this happen. Okay. Here's the algorithm. Iterate through the list, starting with the second element, basically because you, you're going to compare it downwards. Okay. At each element, shuffle the neighbors, neighbors below up until there is a proper place, until the, the proper place is found for that element. Okay. So in other words, we're going to start with 5. And we're basically going to move 5, which is at position 1. We're going to move 5 out of this array. Okay. And then we're going to check it with 9. And if 9 needs to move up, we bump it up 1 to here. And then since we're at the bottom, 5 is going to go right there. Okay. So let me show you that. There we go. We're going to move 5 out of the array, check 5 with 9, compare 5 with 9. 9 needs to slide up, so, so 5 ends up there. 10. And by the way, you stop when you have put it in the right, like when you put it in the right place. You don't keep going through the array. 
Okay, if we look at 10, we compare 10 with 9, right? And if we compare 10 with 9, does anything need to happen? No, so it just stays right there. Okay, all right. And then 8, we compare with 10. 10 needs to move up because 8 needs to be to the left. But you shuffle 10 over there, then you compare 8 with 9, and you shuffle 9 over there, and then you stick 8 there. See how this one works? This is an in place. In place insertion algorithm. So, Senator. You still have to compare with five, right? Oh, sorry. You do have to compare with five. Yes. You compare with five because you know that it, it, you're right. Eight compared with five. Five does not shift. Goes right there. Yeah, absolutely right. Okay. This one's pretty easy. Okay. All right. 12. Does 12 need to do anything? No. Nope. Does 11 just needs to swap once? Okay. Compare it with 12. Compare it with 10. It goes in between the two. So, you compare it to 12, shuffle 12 up. And do it down. Now, by the way, you guys will be implementing, well, you might implement this one depending on what you choose for your homework assignment. But if you want to use this algorithm, like if you want to use the slides to build your algorithm, by all means, I highly encourage it, right? To, to know, to like write your code, you can certainly use the algorithm. Okay? You don't have to like remember it and then code it from scratch or something. You need to code it from scratch, but you don't even remember like the algorithm unless you, you know, you can watch, look at the video or look at the slides for it. OK. All right, so 14 doesn't need to go anywhere because everybody's in order until that point. That's kind of one of the nice things, right? The bottom part of the, this list is always sorted, right? 14 doesn't do now. What about when we get to 2? Alex? We got to like take 2 out and then shuffle 14 and 12 and 11 and 9 all the way up. Yeah, this is going to be terrible, right? 14, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 5, and then 2 goes. Boop, all, all the way over there. That's, a, that's an expensive one right there. When we get to a number that's really low, right? you have to shuffle everybody up. Shuffle everybody up there. Okay. All right, 22 and 43, do those guys need to do anything? Nope, it's now sorted. Okay. Pretty good algorithm. I mean, considering the fact that it's, uh, you know, we, it's easy. <laughs> that's probably about the only thing that's good about this algorithm. Okay. It's, it's pretty easy. Uh, let's see. Performance. Oh, I just told you what the performance is. Well, let's think if this makes sense. The worst case performance is n squared, right? Why is that the case? Can you, can you come up with a, an original ordering that would make it be n squared behavior? A few people can. Moretta? Um, so, kind of like what we just saw with the cube, you have to check everything and then you have to move everything. So, what order would this be in before if we want it to be n squared behavior? If one of the last elements? Or the last element was. Keep going. What do you think? If it was in reverse order. If it was in reverse, the whole thing was reverse order, right? If it was, if it turns out it was 43, 22, 14, right, et cetera, right? You would have to go all the way over to the, you would have to basically do what? You would have to, you would have to do this one, and this one would shift everybody, and this one would shift everybody, and this one would shift everybody, and shift everybody. And so you have to go through the list. Uh, for every element, you basically have to go through the list the whole time. Now, it's not exactly n squared, right? Because the first one, you still only have to go one. But it's, uh, it's still on the order of n squared. Okay. Best case, order n, right? which is what ordering? Yeah, Ben. If it's already in order. Now, notice, if we wanted to sort this sorted list, we would go to 5. We would check it against 2. Nobody moves. Now we go to 8, nobody moves. 9, nobody moves. Notice I'm just going through each one, not moving anybody. Right? So that, this ordering is the best case performance. The average case performance? Yeah, Charlie. Uh, cool. so I was going to ask, how do you calculate the average case? Yeah, that's a good question. How do you calculate the average case? Um, I'm not going to go into details about that in here. When you get to algorithms class, you might. But some like people write entire papers about calculating the average right, for these things. Um, especially the harder sorts. In fact, we will talk about a sort today that we don't know what the average is. We just have no idea, right? Nobody's actually figured it out yet, right? Um, but yeah, but in, in general, the average is order n squared. And you can kind of think of it like, let's say you had a random assortment. Well, a random assortment's going to ha still have a whole lot on the right hand side that need to go shift everybody all the way up, right? So that kind of weighs it towards the n squared behavior. In that case, okay. This is a pretty fast one for small arrays. Small being five to fifteen elements, 
right? Why? Because you just don't have to do that much for 5 to 15 elements. Even though it's n squared, if you have it smaller, there's some sorts that we talk about will have a lot of overhead. Okay, this one has no overhead. First of all, it's in place. Second of all, you just go through the list. I mean, it's not, there's no like having to set anything up. There's no recursion. There's no all this stuff. So if you have a small list like this, you can use an insertion sort and not be worried about it. The best, fastest sorts take a huge number of numbers, huge number of numbers, huge arrays, sort them down to smaller arrays, and then do an insertion sort for all the little bitty ones because it's just, just as fast and not as much overhead. Yeah? Is that like the one we saw where it sorted the whole thing but left it kind of rough? Yeah, that's exactly the one. The one we saw where, it, exactly, as Alex was saying, the one we sorted where it's, it left it kind of rough and then it went through at the end and went right? And, and did it those little itty bitty parts, it was probably doing an insertion sort. Charlie? Is there like some way that we can quantify the, the roughness, so to speak, say within like that we're, you know, if we're sorting it within some sort of threshold? Yeah, that's a good, uh, yeah, like I said, small being about 10 to 15, <laughs> right? That's the threshold you'd use. If you want to sort a list that's only 10 to 15 elements long, that's considered small. It's somewhat empirical. I mean, you somewhat, you kind of have to, make the call somewhere. I think most sorting algorithms make the 10 to 15 range considered small. Otherwise, if your question really is, how do I know how random my data is? You can't really, because you kind of have to sort it first <laughs> to figure that out. I mean, there, there might be some heuristical way of figuring that out, but it's not particularly straightforward. Like to you know, go through the list once and decide, you know, is it kind of sorted or not already? Who knows? You know, you've already spent time going through everybody. <laughs> So there's not much you can do about that. Yeah. There might be some other, there might be a research topic in it though. Who knows? OK, questions on insertion sort? Not a hard sort, just you know, not a particularly great one either. So another sort called selection sort. This is actually, in some sense, even easier than insertion sort. OK, here's how it goes. Find the smallest item in the list and exchange it with the leftmost unsorted element. And then repeat. <laughs> right? Repeat. Let me show you a visualization before we actually do this one. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll slow this down a little bit. So what it's going to do, it's going to, let's see, did I say selection sort? Okay, watch what it does. Somebody, you can, you can probably figure out from this what, what's going to happen here. Okay. Let's see. Uh, did I click selection sort? Yeah. OK, all right. So what's it doing right now? It's highlighting the lowest one, which, oh, you guys got to tell me when I don't put the board down. <laughs> Hold on. There we go. OK, here, let's try it again now. It's going, now what's it doing? It's highlighting the lowest one still. So when it finds one that's lower, that gets to be the lowest. And then it's going to go down. And three is already, yep, three is the lowest now, right? And it's going to go through. Is this a fast sort? <laughs> it's not just because I slowed it down, <laughs> right? Boom, and then back to there, right? OK, while this is going, never going to finish this way, by the way. I mean, like in our time, I can even speed it up a little bit more, and it might. But um, what's the asymptotic behavior for this one? I heard it over here. Think about it for a sec. I heard it over here first. <laughs> Somebody over here said, what did you say? What is it, Lucas? Lucas? I mean, Logan, go ahead. N squared. N squared, why? Because it, every time it's going through, it has to go through the list. Yes. Yeah. It has to go through the list every single time, except for the first elements. I mean, it knows that it's already sorted these ones. But it has to go through the rest of it every single time. So it's N squared. And this sort will, 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 well, will there ever be a case where this sort is not N squared? Like if it was already sorted? No, it still has to do it, <laughs> even if it's already sorted. In fact, let's try this. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to make this into. I can't. Uh, hang on. I'm going to make this. Yeah, I'm going to have. I'm going to do a quick sort on this, which will be relatively quick. And then, um, once this gets sorted, we will try the selection sort on it, and you'll see what happens. Do do do. Did I make it as fast as I did? Yeah, I did. It's getting, it's actually getting there. It's almost done. OK. So now if we try to do a selection sort on this one, right? 
it still has to go through everybody every single time. Right? What a pain. OK, selection sort is a terrible sort. You are going to have to code this one. <laughs> Why are you going to have to code this one? Because I want you to see the, I want you, when we do the tests on it, you will see what the difference is between an n squared algorithm is and a better algorithm. Alex? So we should see bubble sort. No. <laughs> only because bubble sort, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I have a thing against bubble sort, but it's only because the president told me that. It's the only reason. OK. Well, this one, this one is a terrible one, but this is a classically, like, this is a classic algorithm that's probably even easier than bubble sort in the big scheme of things, right? I mean, it's just you just go through the whole list once it's, it's as apparent as it can be that this is n squared behavior. Okay? All right. So let's see. Do I even go through this? Yeah. So we kind of do this, right? It goes. So go through the whole list, find where the like 5 has to be, is in the right place, right? The next one we get to is uh, 8, which has to go there, and you swap it, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? n squared, n squared, n squared, blah. Space complexity uh, is in place, at least. right? So it's in place. That's good. So the space complexity is order n. Okay. OK. Next one we're going to talk about, we've kind of already gone over it a little bit. It's this thing called a heap sort. Okay. A heap sort okay, uses a heap, as you might imagine, to do this. right? The first thing you do in a heap sort is you heapify whatever your your uh, array is. Okay? If you've already got it in an array, well, then you just have to, uh, you have to just do the heapify we talked about, where you start at the n divided by 2 element, and, you, uh, and then you, what do you do? You down heap that one, and then go to the previous element, and down heap that one, and go to the previous one, and down heap it, et cetera. And so the first thing you do, you heapify it, so then it becomes a heap. <coughs> then, you just do a bunch of remove mins, right? This is where it's kind of cool. You just do a bunch of remove mins because you know that you're going to get the next one when you do a remove min. That's the point of a heap. Can we do this in? Shouldn't it be? Next? Shouldn't it be? Well, no. We're going to do min, and then we're going to have it in reverse order. Then we're just going to go through and turn it into an array in reverse order. You could do max. Yeah, you could. If you're doing a min heap, you can do it. We'll, we'll, I'll show you. What, what happens here. Um, can we do this in place is the question. Yeah. Well, this is a good question. right? Can you do it in place? So remember what we did with a heap when we removed the min. Okay, let me, let me draw a heap, um, kind of a heap right here, right? If you, if you have a heap. Okay, where did we say where did we say the next element would go if we were putting this in a heap? Right here, right? Okay. Where if we're doing remove heap, do we get or, or sorry, remove min, do we get the next element from? Remember? Okay, so 5 7 11 uh, let's say um, 25 and 14. Is that a heap? Yeah, it's a heap. OK. So if we do remove min, what do we do with the 5? We get a good, take it somewhere, right? 5. And then what do we put in 5's place? We put the 14 in 5's place. And then what do we do with the 14? Bubble down, right? So the 14 is going to go to its minimum, in this case, 1. So it's going to swap with the 7, right? And then 14, 7, and then we're done, right? What do you notice about this? Empty. It has an empty spot. What should we put there? Put the 5 there. But it's not a heap with that one. But how many elements did it start with? 5, right? How many elements after you do one of these move mins? 4. four. So does it matter that this element still has a 5 in it if we know that there's only 4 elements in the heap? No, this is now the. The 25 is now the last element. So yes, we can do it in place. Just remember how big your heap is, which you have to do anyway. But just put it back in the right place, and we'll do that. Okay? So that's the algorithm. Okay? Do a remove min, and then decrease the heap size, and put the one you just removed where the, in the last position, knowing you're not going to touch it again until you're done. Okay? 
And then it's actually going to be sorted from low to high priority. Okay? Because the lowest one is going to end up in the first place, and the, the, the highest one, rather, is going to end up in the wrong place. So, so you're right. If you, wanted to, if you turned it into a max heap and did this, you would be in the correct order from what we're talking about, Aaron. Yeah. Ben? But wait, isn't some sorting required to create a heap in the first place? Yeah. I mean, sort of. I mean, to create a heap, we do heapify, which is kind of a sorting thing, but it's a pretty fast one, right? It's pretty fast, all things considered. I mean, it's logarithmic, we said, right? Yeah. OK. Yes, Jen. No, you just leave 5 there, and then the next one that's going to go here is going to be the 7, and then the 11 will go here. Sorry, did I do that right? Yeah, you're and the, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, the, the 7 will go seven will go here, and then the 11 will go here, and then the 14, 25. And then so it'll be in reverse order. You'll see. You'll see. Yeah, question. Just the last element means last element of the heap, not of the array. Last element of the heap. Yeah, which, which makes sense, because you don't want I mean. Actually, who cares? You could put it at the last element of whatever your array is. It doesn't matter. But it, it's easiest to just swap it with the one you just took it from. Yeah. Aaron? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to see. Are you saying like we would take, like we would take stuff? Let me show it to you. Okay. Let me show it to you. <laughs> this will probably help. OK. First things first, you heapify it. So you go from this uh, 9, 5, 11, 8, 12, 10, 14 random, did, random order. Right? And you heapify it. right? And we did that the other day, so I'm not going to go through how to do that again. But we heapify it, and this is now a heap. Correct? It happens to be a min heap, but it's a heap. Right? OK. So then you go from there, you say, fine, remove min, in this case, which is 2, and swap it with the last element. And we know that our heap size is now going to be only, instead of before it was uh, 9, now it's going to be ten, uh, 8. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, sorry, 10, and now it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be go from 10 to 9. Okay? And you swap it, and then you down heap, and 43 in this case has to go boop, 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 all the way down here. It seems kind of a waste, but you have to do it, right? 43 goes down to there. Okay? And then next thing you do is you do a remove of uh, the 5. This is the last element in the heap now, so forget about the 2. It's, done, it's dead to us. Until the, end of the, until the end of the algorithm. Okay, so the 5 swaps with the 22, and then the 22 has to be bubbled down. Right? And then it gets bubbled down a couple. Okay? Now the 8 swaps with the 43 again. So 43 gets, gets, gets to bubble down a couple times in this one, right? 8 gets to go with the 43, and then the 8, and then the 43 bubbles down again. Right? And it happens to bubble that way this time. Okay, notice, are we getting a sorted list here? Yeah, it's reverse sorted, but it's sorted. Okay. And then same thing. And then you've got uh, the, the 9 and the 14, because this is not the last element. You might want to be tempted to do this one, but this is not the last element, right? Okay. And then you bubble that down, 14, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't need to go through the rest of it. But is that, is that clear up what you're doing now? That's how, how the algorithm works. Okay. And then at the end, it will end up looking like that, where they all end up in sorted, reverse sorted order. Yes? Do you want to reverse it or just stay? Well, yeah. So, if, so Aaron was right. If you wanted to do this so that it ended up 2, 5, 8, 9 the other way, you would have done a max heap, right? And you would have just done a max heap and done it that way. Okay, good. Performance for this one. We have finally reached an n log n uh, algorithm here. OK, so heap, uh, heap sort, as this is called, is not a terrible sort. It's not so bad, actually. In fact, the best performance is also n log n, which is nice. Average n log n. When we talk about these n log n ones, and you'll get to this in algorithms class, you can compare these sorts by what the constants are in here. We only care about the fact that this is an n log n search. We don't sort. We don't care about the fact that there's a, a certain constant in there. Okay? This is not really the best when it comes to comparing against some other n log n sorts. But in, the, in a pinch, this one's easy to do and fairly straightforward and, and pretty fast. Definitely in place, right? We didn't need to do any, really have any other uh, external memory at all. And we could have also used this little spot if we really wanted to do a swap thing. So, that. OK? 
Okay. Questions on heap sort? Yeah, Ben. Uh, yeah. So, if we, so when heap of find, what will we do if the largest number is the first one? If the, if the largest number is the first one, OK. Remember, so for heapify, what do you do? You go to the n, minus, n divided by 2 element. right? You go to the n divided by 2 element. Let's, let's say this whole heap is in here. right? You go, to, uh, you go to the one that's got the first one with children, and you down heap that. So, it does, so your question is a little skewed because it doesn't actually matter what the max one is. Go back and ref refresh your memory on what heapify is. Good. Other questions on heap sort? No? OK, we'll do a version of this in the lab next week, actually. Okay. All right. Now, this sort is actually somewhat rarely taught, as it turns out. Okay? This is called a shell sort. For the first like 10 times I saw this sort, I didn't look into what the algorithm was. And I always thought it was like, like sorting. You know those like the shell game where you're sorting things like this and this? That's what I thought it was kind of based on. Like I don't know why. My mind was like, oh, it's got to be something where you're shifting things back and forth. No, it's named after this guy named Donald Shell. <laughs> right? So it has nothing to do with that. It's just named after this guy named Donald Shell. Now, this is actually similar to an insertion sort, which was not so good. But this is better than an insertion sort. And we're going to see why when we get into it a little bit. This is a pretty easy sort to code. So for your homework, if you're thinking, boy, it'd be really nice if I got a relatively easy one of the harder ch choices, this one's not a terrible one. It's not dead simple, but it's not terrible. Okay, it's basically an insertion sort lots of times. And you'll see what I mean. Difficult to analyze. Right? This is not an easy sort to analyze. This is the one I was talking about where we don't actually know what the best case or the average complexity is of it. Nobody's actually figured it out yet. <laughs> right? It's still an open research problem. Right? But we do know it's pretty good. It's not great, but it's pretty good. Okay? Here's how it works. Okay? You rearrange the elements. And I'm going to show you this so you'll, you'll see it. But you rearrange the elements. So you look at every h. That's a terrible, I shouldn't have used that letter hth element right, produces a sorted list. Okay, what that means is if you have, if you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If we make a, a list where every third element is a sorted list in itself, that would mean that if you looked at this one, Let's see, one, and then this one, and then uh, this one, and then this one. Those would be in sorted order. See how that works? So what we're going to do is we're going to do a bunch of iterations on this. And the first thing, we're, and we're going to go from big numbers down to smaller numbers in terms of what gets sorted first. So like we might do, in this case, this would be a, I believe this is called a three sort. So it's every third element. If you looked at just those elements and ignored all the rest, those ones would all, already be sorted. Okay, And then you change to a smaller, what we call a gap, okay? a smaller gap, and do the same thing over again. And, and then you keep doing smaller, smaller gap until you reach a gap size of 1. And if a gap size of 1 would mean that everybody's in order. Charlie. Um, is it that those, every third element is in order to the entire set? Or nope, just, the, just relative to the other ones I've circled in this case. So this could be a 1, 3, 8, 10, but it could not be a 1, 10, 8, 3. Right? So it's got to be in order according to the other ones in that subset. Okay? Can anyone think about why this might actually help us out here? In some cases, anyway? Think about that for a sec. Actually, talk to your neighbor about this. Think about why this sorting like this might, might produce a better, better than insertion sort.
Okay, come on back. Andre, I saw you had some good ideas. What do you think? That's all right. Okay, what were you, th what were you thinking? Any ideas? Okay. Well, right. Well, what it's doing is it's saying, okay, these ones are going to be in order, and then let me put boxes around these other ones, like triangles here. These ones are going to be in order, right? And then you're going to do these ones in order, right? Oh, I thought it was like right. And then, and then that's a that's a three sort, right? And then you're going to do a let's say a, a one a two sort where now you're going to have this one and 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 this. See what I mean? So then it's going to be that way. So I'm sorry if I didn't, I didn't go into the next step for this. But yeah, it's going to be like that, and then you're going to do that. Here's a question. Did anybody else have an idea? What do you think, Moretta? Well, you're breaking, breaking up into smaller chunks, so it's faster and better space-wise to do it in small pieces versus doing the whole thing. OK, it's better in small pieces. I like that idea. What do you, you think? Yeah, more or less the same thing. You, you, you basically break it into chunks, and you can jump from chunk to chunk, because it's in an array, so you don't need to walk through the whole thing. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Was insertion, was insertion sort one of the ones that worked well in the other sort of Ah, that's a good, that's what I was hoping somebody would say. If it's nearly sorted, insertion sort works very well. In fact, remember insertion sort, if it's already sorted, what's the logarithmic complexity? N, because it just needs to go roop right through, and it goes, hey, everybody's in order. Right, so you need to check neighbors, but then that's it. So yeah, so what you're kind of doing is you're saying, for data that's not particularly well sorted, this will like it's all like kind of random. Which most data, if you just take random data, it's gonna be kind of random. You're basically saying, okay, let's chunk it a little bit by the like the instead of having well, at probably absolutely random data, it probably doesn't really matter too much in the end. But if it is somewhat sorted, this will probably uh, it will probably work a little better by, by putting it into smaller chunks. Okay? Yeah, question there? Yeah. Either, so basically what it says is that either you're at the beginning of the shell sort algorithm and you're working on a bunch of small lists that are just every yep. bit element or whatever. Yep. Um, and then, but then by the time you get to the smaller gaps, uh -huh. it's nearly sorted. It's, it's nearly sorted. Right, it's already nearly sorted. Yeah. So let's walk through one and just see what it looks like. Okay. I've tried to do try to do this so it's color coded, um, basically so that you can see kind of what's going on. But here's the array. Right. We're going to pick a two, two, three gap sizes. We're going to have a five, a three, and a one. Picking the gap sizes is, is in itself a tricky challenge. In fact, if you go to Wikipedia, as you might, and look up shell sort, it's probably the first. Uh, first one, of course it is. Um, if you look at shell sort, it talks about gap sizes. And down here somewhere it says, hey, here's a bunch of different gap sizes. Look at all these types of gap sizes. This is like make your, make your eyes bleed. Right? The floor of n divided by 2 to the k, right? which could be, well, it doesn't show you, oh yeah, well, n over 2, n over 4, all the way down to 1. That's one set of gap sizes. right? You could do. Uh, 2 to the k minus 1, which would be 1, 3, 5, 7, 15, et cetera, except the other way. You'd want to do it bigger first. Okay, All these different ones. And people have then gone and proven what the worst case complexity is of all these things. Not so bad. The complexity is not amazing. right? I don't see too many log n log n's in there. This is not the best one in the world, but it's interesting. So you can go look this up. You could probably get a paper published if you found another gap size that does better than these ones. So if you want a fun math project, you, know, you could do it. Do you have a question? Yeah, Ben. Would it make any difference if instead of, divi if instead of doing, dividing it into every nth number, you just, you just chopped it into, into individual arrays? Uh, you mean like half, half, half? Yeah. That would be called the merge sort, which we'll do in a little bit. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that would be called the merge sort. So um, you can, uh, w good idea. Yeah, it would make a difference. So that would function differently? It would function differently instead of, uh, it would function differently, yes. Yeah, it might be a merge sort, depending on what you do with it, but yeah. OK, so let's look at this one so we can get through the, uh, the actual algorithm. First, we're going to five sort, OK? Which, we're gonna, which means we're going to, and, and by the way, I kept the 0 at the off to, keep, to be the same as the other, uh, the other one. In fact, I might not have done that in some of the other. For the HTML file, I might not have done that. I might have missed that. Yeah? So when you say like five sort, do you start at 0 or do you start 
let's, we're going to start with a, we're going to make it easy to calculate in this case. So it's going to be 1 and 5 and 10. No, one sorry, I'm, li I'm lying to you. 1 and 6 and 11. So add 5. This wouldn't have been any easier. <laughs> but anyway, 1 and 6 and 11 get sorted. Okay, and then 2 and 7 and 12 get sorted because they're 5 apart. And 3 and 8 and there's no extra, so those ones get sorted. Okay, so that's the first pass, basically. Okay, first pass. And in the first pass, okay, I put the originals up here just to kind of remember what they were. In the first pass, what it ends up looking like is, uh, is, well, this one here. You've basically gone through and you've said 1 and 6 and 11 have to be in order. 17 and 25 and 62 is in order. You see how that works? Okay, we've done an insertion sort just on those gaps. And then 2 and 7 and 12 are in order. 83, 95. Oh, I don't know why that ones are not in order. I might have colored it wrong. And 83 and 95. Sorry? Oh, yeah, right. I'm looking at the wrong one. 28, 83, and 95. I'm looking at the wrong, wrong thing there. OK, question. Do you have to use an insertion sort? No, I don't think so. Generally, we do, but I don't think you'd have to. In fact, if your gap was big enough, the problem with not the problem with doing it the other way is you better have a better you better have a sort where you can do it definitely in place, and it's going to be a little tricky to keep the the order of everything. Yeah. But isn't the whole point of the shell sort that it's a way of making insertion sort more? It's built around. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's built around the fact that insertion sort is good for smaller chunks when you're doing this kind of thing. Yeah. So. I guess technically you, didn't, you wouldn't need to, but probably not the best idea to do it that way. <laughs> OK. All right. So then the next one we're going to do is a three sort, meaning that the red ones, the 1, 4, 7, 10, are getting sorted together, and the 2, 5, 8, 11, et cetera, getting sorted together. OK, let's see if that works. OK. And then, yeah, now I, I put both of the ones up there. So the uh, 17, 47, 69 and 83 are the red ones in order. Okay, you see how this is kind of working? If you need to go stare at this a little bit more, go right ahead. Because I know it's a little tricky. Yeah? Is it possible to find um, a selection of sorts such that we won't need to do a one sort? I think you're almost always going to have to do a one sort. I believe you have to. Not 100% sure, but I believe you have to. Yeah, because that's always going to be the last pass. Maybe it's such, maybe there would, but I don't know. Do some research on it. Yeah. Report back. Okay. All right, and then finally you do a one sort, which basically is now we're going to sort everything. But look, it's almost sorted already, right? I mean, some are out of order. Um, oh, this is after the sort? I guess so. Oh, you're right. It's almost in order up here, 17. And then you do one more sort, and then it is in order. Yeah. Yeah, good. Okay. All right, so that's the shell sort. The worst performance is n squared. Not so good. Best performance, n log n. So I guess if you find a good gap size and you've done it right, the best, well, even with the best performance, n log n, which is still not, not that great, right? A lot of our best performances are like n squared or n. The average, though, still an open question, right? So, you know, you're probably not going to see this in a real sort anywhere, right? Definitely in place because we didn't actually do anything, it's just insertion sort. Questions on that one? Again, if you want a challenging one but not overly hard to do for your homework assignment, this is the one that I would choose. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll show you a shell sort visualization in a minute. That's what we'll actually end with. Um, but let's quickly talk with sorting for homework five. I mentioned this before. You have to write three algorithms. This is going to be a little tricky to set up in Eclipse if you are using Eclipse because you're going to have to have three main files, basically, that all have mains in them. Um, the best idea is to just rename the ones you're not working on something like dot, you know, temp or something instead of dot cpp. It won't try to compile them. If you have trouble with that, email me or put something on Piazza. One of the sorts is going to be a selection sort. Okay, I already said that was a bad sort, but it's dead simple to code, so that's one thirty your assignment done. It's easy. One sort is going to be from the following list. Okay, you have to check a shell sort, which we just talked about. You could, you could choose shell sort. Merge sort, which, which we'll get to the other day. Quick sort. Or insertion sort. I may actually take that out. <laughs> no, I won't. I'll leave it in there. If you want to do two, 
if this is the assignment where you're like, I just want a dead easy assignment, pick those two, and then you have to pick one more, and that's that. The third sort you can do, okay, is anything from the list, okay, but you can, but you can also implement any other algorithm you find, okay. So if you, well, within limits, right? You can't do bubble sort. You can't do crazy sorts that are never going to end. You can't do some other things. But you can pick your own sort. Yeah. Okay, heap sort. Because we do it in the lab, I'm not going to let you do it because you already kind of see it. So sorry about heap sort. Even though that one's pretty easy too. Okay. Other question? Is that why your question too? Yeah. Is there like grade based on how complex the sort is? is no, your grade is not going to be your grade's going to be based on the following. Did you implement the sort properly? Like if you chose an insertion sort, is it really an insertion sort? If you chose a say a um, uh, let's see. If you chose Let's see a good example. Shell sort, you know, well, that's not a good example. Merge sort happens to be classically law n log n behavior. Does it behave that way? We will actually test it and time your sorts to see if it's really n log n based on your selection sort. So if your selection sort takes 10 seconds, how long should your, or 100 seconds, let's say. Let's say this is your selection sort. If your selection sort takes 100 seconds, how long would a, mm, not a very good, not a very good question. Um, your other sorts should be smaller than that, <laughs> basically. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to frame it. It's not easy to do that n log n behavior. If your selection sort is 100 and, it's, uh, and you do 10 times as much, right, how long should, your next, your, should the next one take if it's 10 times as many elements? It actually be 100 squared, which would be what, 10,000? 10,000, so that's how much more time it should take. We won't test it where it takes 10,000 seconds. <laughs> but we'll test it such that it takes two or three minutes at least. You should be striving for less than three minutes. I think we'll probably give you up to five or six minutes to finish a sort. We'll do 100,000 elements or 200,000 elements or something. Yeah? Uh, I care about space complexity in that you have to describe what your space complexity is. But I'm not going to worry about it. None of your sorts will take gigabytes of memory. OK? Yeah? No, you make up your own. Last semester we had people making up their own sorts. It was cool. Yeah, it was cool. Alex? Oh, um, when is this due? Uh, I'm not exactly sure yet. I've got to figure that out today, but like and probably two weeks. Will we just do it through normal provide? Normal provide, yeah. Provide will give me lots of files. It'll give me your three sorting ones plus the associated .cpp for each sort. You'll see. It's all in the make file. Okay. All right, we'll talk more about that later. Now, I do want to show you this cool thing. You might, you might have seen this in uh, Comp 11 already. There is this dance group. Yeah. Seen this? Yes. This is a shell sort done in Hungarian dance. Right? Oops. I won't, you guys can go. It is. Whoops, what happened? Oh, I did it again. Hang on. There we go. OK. I won't, I won't make anybody stay around. But if you haven't seen this, it is kind of neat. They're actually doing a shell sort. These guys are doing the, uh, did they say what the? Gap size was? It looks like, five. looks like five. Yeah, gap size of five. I think they do a five and three. I think we saw it for the. Yeah. You probably saw it for some other sort, bubble sort or something, selection sort. Yeah. So these two have to swap, I think. Yeah. Anyway, so it's kind of fun. They do this for lots of different uh, sorting algorithms. Anyway, take a look at that if, in your spare time if you want. Any other questions? See you guys Monday.